Hello and welcome everyone. I want to make sure that you had a chance to answer the poll question there. Thanks for doing that. So part of our conversation will cover some of those business problems that you're having from a security management and web center today. That's our topic. So as we can sit, continue our monthly webinar series, our, our tips and tricks sessions, this one is going to focus on configuration and change management in Oracle Web Center. Happy to be joined by my colleague, Jerry Aber. Hi, Jerry, and welcome. Hi, Jason. Thanks for having me. Jerry has been involved in dozens of Web Center implementations, upgrades, security policy change management over the years. So that's why we've asked Jerry to participate today. And Jerry will be joining us a little later on and also giving us a demo. So this is what we plan to cover. I'll just give a quick overview on Fishbowl, who we are and what we do. I'll then turn it over to, to Jerry to talk through some of the, the how what, what you're, what's possible in Web Center today, including you know, some best practices when it comes to security policy, security management, change management, and Web Center. And then we'll talk a little bit about with some of those problems that we've heard from customers that you see with security, how one of our software solutions from Web Center can help. That solution is called Advanced User Security Mapping or Awesome. Jerry will give a quick demo of that solution. We'll summarize and then get to questions. So a quick overview of Fishbowl. Hopefully by now most of you know what we do. Hopefully we've been able to help you when it comes to Web Center. We've been doing Web Center projects since 1999, really focusing on content management and portal solutions. Since that time, we've kind of, with the customers, you know, challenges changing and use cases, we've added other technologies into the mix as far as our knowledge base is concerned. So we also work with Oracle's Content and Experience Cloud. That's really, that's really Oracle's first foray with content management in the cloud helping customers develop omni-channel experiences for the digital content. Most recently, we've been developing mobile applications and creating chatbots or digital assistants for customer and employee service and sales enablement and other use, case in, use cases using Oracle Mobile and the Oracle Digital Assistant. And we also have enterprise search solutions. So if you have on-premise search needs, we offer the MindBreeze Inspire search appliance. And if you're moving to the cloud and want more of that cloud-based use case to search your content, we use Google Enterprise Search for that within the Google Cloud. So as far as Web Center security challenges that we've seen, and a lot of, the, a lot of this we've, we've heard directly from most of you on, is that the, the administration in Web Center from a security standpoint can be quite daunting. And I think most of you recognize that Integrating LDAP, AD, or single sign-in solutions with Web Center by automatically populating users in Oracle Web Center content from those systems can require a lot of steps and configuration. And with the more groups that you have that have to be created and maintained, this really can make your security structure or model very complex. And the more that you have and the relationships between those for access level and permissions, when someone goes to access a piece of content, the overall performance can be impacted. As far as control, when changes need to be made, if your organization does not have a, a dedicated Web Center administrator and a lot of that change is, is left to a general IT person or your IT staff to make access level or permissions changes, they might not seem important enough or that IT person might not overall understand your content security policy so that it might not get handled quickly, which again can just lead to that delayed access. And as far as new users, so, you know, we might be experiencing this now with uh, kind of our work structure, more people working from home, maybe your security policies have changed a little bit. To get a new user ad added to the system, they first need to log in, and then the, the settings need to be all manually created. So this again, takes time, which can delay that access. And then if you want to quickly audit or troubleshoot access issues, that does take some time as well. So basically an IT person or administrator would have to sit down with the individual, look at what they have access to, and then make the relevant changes. So 
a lot of that can just lead to poor performance if there's many LDAP groups that delayed access to the content, and then leaving yourself at risk. If you're not able to globally audit permissions as things might have changed, you might have people accessing content that they shouldn't, shouldn't be accessing. So, so those are some of the challenges that we've seen. And I'm gonna now turn it over to Jerry to talk about, within Web Center anyway, a little review of you know, security policy and change management with Web Center and some of the best practices that we recommend. Jerry. Thanks, Jason. So kind of let's start out with getting a basic understanding of what the Web Center security model entails. Uh, we can spend quite a bit of time getting very deep into this, but we're going to just kind of cover an overview of it. And the four main entities are around users, security groups, roles, and accounts. And accounts are an optional area that we'll dig into just a little bit, but the Web Center security model basically works with this the WebLogic security plugin to connect that LDAP or AD source to your Web Center content server. And it's the intersection of that definition of the access via the roles or accounts of the groups to the content. And the content itself gets a security group or an optional account if you define your granularity so much. And it's that mapping between what the account structure that is on the content item and how it maps to what roles and or groups you have access to and what privileges those provide in terms of read, write, delete, or administration. So depending on the size of your organization and the security needs you have for managing the security in Web Center, it can range in terms of the granularity of that security configuration. The less granular areas are around security groups and roles and permissions, which are very easy to set up and map to your LDAP and provide your read, write, delete access. For those customers that need slightly more granularity, you'll drill down into accounts and that might permeate throughout your organization depending on how your structure is gonna work. And the most granular level of access is using the out-of-box access control list where you can actually put <clears throat> named users and designate that read, write, delete access to that individual piece of content. So when you're evaluating when and how to apply your security model, you may end up using a combination of groups, accounts, and roles to apply it to your security roles. Deciding how to implement your model will involve how granular you need to get. And like I said, may end up getting down to working with access control lists. Like most security features within your kind of apps tiers, your apps technology, you're going to have basically authentication and authorization that are going to need to be configured to provide individuals access to your Web Center content. The authentication model is based on, like I said, the Web Center, Web Logic, excuse me, security provider connecting with that LDAP repository to your content server. But the real rubber meeting the road is through authorization. And when you go beyond groups and how you deal with authorization, which is basically a couple of approaches we need to consider to make that happen. One is the account-based. With this approach, there will be both roles and accounts created, and the account will give more restrictive fine-grained control, and we will map accounts from AD groups within your LDAP AD repository. And that's done through the WebLogic server groups using what's called an at symbol, and that at symbol is mapped to those content server accounts. And one of the challenges with working um, with large organizations is there'll be hundreds, if not thousands of groups with the um, designation at sign, read, read, write, or read, write, delete, or read, write, delete admin. So for every group you have, you could have up to four different groups that need the, the right privileges assigned to it. And that works out of the box. And it's very nicely handled when it comes to um, the small to medium size kind of security models, but the larger ones where there's tons and tons of departments and areas that segment that content, there could be, like I said, hundreds um, of uh, groups in your LDAP repository. The other is role-based, and with this approach, the security role will be mapped to AD groups, and there will be predefined lists of roles within Web Center. Once the user logs in, the Web Center security filter will map that AD group to the Web Center role, and the user will have access filled accordingly. One of the challenges with that definition is 
Content Server does allow you to predefine your accounts, um, but it does take overhead for you to manage that list of predefined accounts. So we've solved the way to make that automatic without you managing all that overhead. Some of the key things to keep in mind for your Web Center security best practices is to define those security groups before anyone checks in files that must be secure. So any of you that might be on a call today already have Web Center content, or if you're just starting, you're gonna to wanna to map that model out first. Many times during a um, migration or an upgrade, um, the security model along with the metadata model tend to get reviewed in terms of any transformation that takes place to kind of consolidate or clean up any of those learnings you had that you wish you would have done several years ago when you first rolled out the system. The number of security groups should be kept to a minimum. Less than 50 is what Oracle recommends. We tend to push it a little bit farther than that and somewhere around 30 to provide the optimum search performance and user administration performance with the admin efforts. One of the, the no-nos we see with a lot of customers is because they tend to use a lot of groups and not true account hierarchy that they will kind of repurpose the role as another group and try and make that work and it kind of gets redundant and the role is not properly used. And the role should be defining the, the purpose that a user has in terms of working with that content, be it a contributor, be it a viewer, uh, be it an approver of some kind, as opposed to the read, write, delete type access. You wanna put all files that share the same access into one security group and then apply that level of uh, granularity you need in terms of your account hierarchy. Make sure you set up a logical naming convention for those security groups because going back and understanding what that looks like later can be a bit of a challenge. So if you don't have any tooling like that we're gonna cover a little bit today, just looking at your LDAP repository doesn't necessarily um, give you a view of what people have access to. And when you're looking at hundreds of them, it's a very time consuming process to go back and try and evaluate whether um, someone has the right access or whether you've got a gap in that security model and you expose something you should not be exposing in your environment. And you want to leverage uh, roles across the organization in a similar fashion where possible. Uh, don't attempt to compensate for groups, like I mentioned, for poorly defined roles. Um, a contributor is a contributor whether you're in Department A or Department B. So they should be kind of consistent so you can manage that process. Some other things to, um, to kind of note is, um, you know, make, making sure that you're not getting into um, basing your security model on too many complex notations. If you can keep your security model simplified and truly ask yourself, what is the real issue in terms of providing somebody visibility into some piece of content? If you're looking to kind of complement some other a uh, way to solve that if you are exposing something to somebody that they can read or maybe can't edit, maybe if you put a workflow in place to prevent a change from going out into the general population for viewing as a way to kind of offset that so somebody can review it before it goes out. That way you can kind of keep their security uh, groups and accounts down to a minimum. I'll hand it over to you, sir. All right, thanks, Jerry. So as Jerry shared, in our experiences, you know, there's many different ways that we've helped companies do some change management from the security policy and web center. And as Jerry mentioned, it really depends on the complexity of your security policy in terms of what we can do out of the box. And if there's other things that are needed to extend that configuration on your security policy and just make it easier and streamline it, we do have a solution that can do that. So I'm just gonna provide a quick overview of that solution called Advanced User Security Mapping or Awesome. And we really created this solution to really bridge that gap between your, your enterprise security model and web center security. So we've seen that one of the most important aspects of enterprise content management is ensuring that users have the appropriate access levels to content. So while some information right, might remain hidden to users, other content can be viewed, revised, or deleted by anybody. And these are really the rules that you know, the spectrum of access levels that there are, as Jerry mentioned with the various LDAP groups that might need to get created, that can get pretty complex. And that's one of the problems that we touched on um, with your active directory structure that can impact performance. So Awesome can 
leverage some of that through a rules engine to map combinations of LDAP attributes to Web Center roles. So you don't need dedicated groups for every permission level. So really less security authorization checks on your directory, which should improve that performance. So at a high level, this rules engine is really allow you to set up those rules. It also allows you to really ensure that the people in your organization that need access to content have the right access level and permissions. So in terms of how it helps you do that quickly on the LDAP side, it's really was designed to allow conditional addition of grant and removal of content server user roles, accounts and aliases for LDAP or Active Directory users. So probably, as Jerry mentioned, you're familiar with doing that, uh, depending on how many users are accessing content and the various groups you have set up with their roles, that mapping, those mappings and those groups can start to really grow in size exponentially, in fact. So how Awesome can help with that is through, the, through again, this rules engine set up and grant those roles and accounts and aliases based on those rules. And if, you're, you, if you need to quickly synchronize, it, it's able to do that as well between your directory and the content server. That really ensures that up-to-date information um, for the users with access capabilities enabled. As far as control, I think you understand that quickly granting or blocking, blocking access to content there has to be a change back in the LDAP directory. And depending on the timing of when that request comes in, there could be a delay. That could take hours, days, or weeks. So what Awesome is able to do is give you the, op give you the ability to uh, manage user access again with those rules. And based on setting that up, you can quickly grant or deny user access to that specific piece of, piece of, piece of content or pieces of content. So when you have users that come to you and say they can't access, you know, content, you know, what typically might happen is you go over to their workstation, you have them log in, they show you what they can access, and then you go back through and see what their permissions and access levels are. So with Awesome, you can quickly evaluate. There's an evaluate tool. And again, what I'm covering here, Jerry's going to show you a little bit about so that you can enter their name and evaluate to see their roles, accounts, and aliases. So just a lot faster to, to see what they have access to and then make any appropriate changes. And as I mentioned with kind of what everyone is experiencing now with maybe a different work structure, adding more users to the system or removing users, you wanna be able to um, you know, quickly be able to do that. So on the adding new user side, you know, traditionally to add a new user, they first have to log in and then you can start to set up their their rules and permissions within LDAP. Well, with Awesome, you can quickly do that through, through rules. You can refresh the users within the LDAP and update their information periodically and do that sync across. So you're just always ensuring that the right people have the right access to the right content in Web Center. And then auditing. So that's a big one. So obviously, you know, when people can access content, you know, you can quickly see what they can access, and get them access. But in terms of just having that, that global view into all the content in your organization and who has access to what, um, those permissions aren't stored in the content server. So to do that, you know, it's very problematic and, and would be very manual to do. So with Awesome, and we work with customers that use this solution just the biggest reason they, they purchased it and used it was for this feature. To again, globally take a look at, you know, who has access to what, you know, based on security group account and permission level. So that was kind of an overview of Awesome. I'm gonna turn it over to Jerry, and he's gonna show you a little bit about this and creating these rules through the rules engine, troubleshooting user access, as well as global auditing across your organization. So with that, I'm gonna stop sharing and turn it back over to Jerry. Perfect, thanks Jason. Um, so I'm showing you now is the Web Center content UI uh, that you, when you log into that you can see real quickly how we get at some of our stuff. Those of you are firm with it, I have our products, those who don't. When we add our products to your environment, we end up with options under what's called the Fishbowl Tools. 
And the way to get to the advanced user security mapping UI is through that fishbowl administration. And there's basically two links around this particular product. One is syncing um, init initiating users, and the other is mapping and defining the rules. So we embed the UI for mapping and managing the rules within the content server experience so that a power user slash admin can be the manager of these rules. Now, in contrast to an LDAP security area who might be managing access and putting names into those various groups through whatever processes or mechanisms you have to open up a ticket or submit a request, um, we feel that an opportunity to improve the process once people get moved into a certain level of groups is to manage those rules and access through this UI, which should cut down the amount of um, effort it takes to manage that. So you can add a rule or you can visit, uh, view the rules as they are listed here, and you can have any number of rules in there. Chances are you're going to have 10, 12, maybe 20 different rules that are applied to access to your environment. There technically is no limit, but you definitely don't want to have a situation where your total cost of managing is just too high in terms of the list of rules, and then you're offsetting the benefit of a rule-based engine. The rules are evaluated in order that you see them on the list here, and they can be enabled or disabled based on just clicking the switch here. They can be copied, and they can be deleted from this list as well. The edit button opens up one of the rules and allows me to configure this particular rule, which is granting admin access to an individual user using a simple format, the attribute, and performing a grant. Now, when you're working with the, this experience, the rule format specifies the rule condition, simple or Java. You can put Java code in there, I'll show you what an example one of those looks like here in a minute. You can define the rule type. I want to evaluate on attributes, on group membership, or OU membership. So you can move that up the chain if you like. And your rule condition is just defining how the rule condition is going to be evaluated. In this case, I'm evaluating it by user. I could also evaluate it by department, by group membership, um, by organizational unit, or some Java rules. And you can see how the mapping of that experience looks like. The result of that rule condition is to grant or deny access to roles or accounts. And these roles or accounts can be pulled from predefined lists that are configured in your content server, or I could add one on the fly. So if you need to add another account or another role, you don't need to go through the process of working with your IT security folks. You can just set that naming up here so when, when the content is contributed, then the account can be selected and the access will be provided. Um, another example of a, of a rule here is I'll go through a couple of this too. For those of you might be IPM or AP type of users and use the annotation feature, you can grant or deny access to the annotation roles that come out of the box with the annotation activity for images. Uh, I'll just give you a view of the group access, a simple rule for group membership is evaluating the group and looking for the name AD underscore group underscore contributor to provide this, con this set of users contributor access to the legal documents for read write. And while you're in a particular rule, you can test the rule and see whether or not I have access through that process. One of the other ways of looking at um, rules is a Java example. So when you create the rule, you can use the Java indicator, pick group membership, and just involve Java, insert Java code into the rule condition. And you can even insert Java code into the roles or accounts area to do that evaluation. It's smart enough to support that. So like Jason mentioned earlier, um, one of the big things is around troubleshooting. Um, when you are on the phone with somebody and you got a, an issue, somebody says, I can't have access to something, I shouldn't have access to something. When you're in an environment, you can see your user profile, you can evaluate, evaluate the roles and accounts you might have access to. And then you have to usually send a screenshot or cut and paste this over to somebody who's working the ticket. Another way to do that is there are two features that allow us to 
view what access people have to content within the content server. One is retrieve users with access, which allows me to select by my security group or my security accounts that might be applied to see who has read, write, read, write, delete, or admin access. And provide me a list of that and print that or save that list to an Excel spreadsheet so you can share that for validation. And so as you create groups and accounts, they become leveraged within the system. You can then perform this retrieve user access at any time. Another way that people love to look to see who has access is to actually do it by name. So I can look for my particular name. It will give me a predefined list of some matching uh, name that might be in there. You might have other people in your environment. I'll pick myself. And this tells me that I have access, guest access um, through roles, contributor and authenticated, and access to accounts none. I can also run this as an evaluation to show you the steps of the evaluation. So if you remember the list of rules you had before, it will evaluate them in the order they were dragged and dropped on the UI and give you the end result of what was granted, what was skipped, and what was removed as part of that process. So the combination of those evaluations end up with what my true access to the content is. All right, Jason, uh, that's everything from my end. All right, thanks, Jerry. So hopefully what everyone was able to see in that demo is, again, more of a rules-based way through a simple UI to set up various permissions and access levels within Web Center through this rule creation, as well as the ability to quickly troubleshoot and audit permissions globally across your organization. So realizing that as we work with customers, you know, they're gonna have different security policies, security structures in place. You know, we've worked with a lot of customers that you know, through Web Center and, and the WebLogic server, we're able to make those changes for them, help them like, make those changes, or they're making those changes themselves. As you expand your use cases, add more users, go through an acquisition, whatever it might be, you know, as, as some of those policies change, that's where it can get more daunting. And then that, that's where a tool like Advanced User Security mass, Mapping or Awesome can help you to really give you more of that rule-based method for really as, as we talked about more of that granular, granular control of user access within Web Center. We get asked this question a lot um, when we talk about how to solve those problems with the hundreds of LDAP AD groups and managing them. But we feel that we can, at a minimum, reduce that number using a rule-based engine and putting in 8, 10, 12, 15 rules, reducing it by 50% on the IT security LDAP side. So if you have 100 in there, we can get you down to 50 to make that a more manageable process. So I just wanted to kind of inject that because I get asked that quite a bit when we uh, work with customers directly. Yeah, uh, Jerry, I appreciate that, thank you. I hope everyone has a great rest of their day and a great week. Thanks again for joining us.